So obviously we've only added one computed column here. We've only enhanced our apps data just a tiny bit, but there's so much more you can do here. If you browse these computed columns and then look up these different computed columns in our documentation, you'll start to get a sense of all the different things that you can do in Glide. And again, you can always head over to our community and ask and see what people are doing there. That's a great place to see uh, what pe different people are doing with Glide. But for now though, just for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna do a bit more of a deep dive into the layout editor that you, so you can actually see how to apply the data that you've enhanced in the data editor to your app's layout. So as a reminder, on the left-hand side, we have the ability to manage navigation. We can change the order of these tabs or screens here. We can change the style of those screens to different uh, layouts. We can change the data that's appearing in them. So for example, we changed the SKU here to show at the top. What about if we wanted to show this restock alert? Um, and what you'll find is that you're often jumping between the data editor and the layout editor as you think of things, because when you see your data here, it's a lot more clear what needs to be changed about the data and vice versa. So when I look at this restock uh, text here, I think, well, that's not very attention grabbing. Uh, I want something else in that text. So you could jump back to the data editor, or as I showed you earlier, we can just open the mini data uh, editor or the data panel at the bottom. And I'm gonna double click on this computer column that we made just a second ago, and I'm gonna edit what actually comes out here. So I'm gonna to go to the beginning here and I'm gonna choose an alert emoji and just hit done. And now we can see that that value is being shown and it's a little bit more obvious for people. So you can actually add new data and computer columns in the data panel here as well, if you're happy with this small view and you can see what's happening in the layout editor, or if you need a big view, you can head back to the data editor. So let's talk a little bit now about the different types of screens you're gonna encounter when you're in the layout editor. The different types of screens that you can build and that your users will use in Glide. We've been so far looking at this kind of top level type of screen where you see a list of information and then you can of course click into that list, or each one of these list items. You can customize this list screen uh, in different ways, allow users to add, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I want you to notice that down here in the components panel, we have one component. And basically this entire screen is being powered by this one collection component. And if we click on this collection component, the right hand side changes a little bit to give us a bit more customization for this collection component. We can change the size of these items, make them extra large, change the kind of style a little bit more, uh, play around with padding and things like that. But then if we go back to this top level view, we have a kind of a, a more simpler view. And this is a collection screen. It's a very simple way of working with the data in a table with multiple rows. And when we click into one of these items, we're working with a detail screen. And again, just as a reminder, if this is confusing, it's a lot more uh, easy to understand when you open the data panel. Right now we're looking at a single row, but if we click back, we're looking at lots of rows of data, okay? So let's go into one of these detail screens. I'm going to collapse this data panel and work with components. So we can see that we have three different components. We have breadcrumbs, which is this navigation item up at the top. We have the title, which is connected to the uh, image of our uh, product. We have the title here, which is connected to the name. And we have the subtitle here, which is connected to the description. And of course, we can change that by going into this component and customizing it just like we did with the collection back on the top level screen. But we can also add new components. And when you click this button here, you have a whole different set of components that you can add to your detail screens. Now I'm gonna add, if we look in our data panel here, we have this one unused column here called notes, which I created earlier uh, to, to illustrate this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new component here called the notes component. <clears throat> and the notes component allows you to, uh, so if a component doesn't show, it might sometimes mean that it's not connected to the right column. So uh, this is defaulted to being connected to the stock alert column, which we don't want. And if I connect it to the notes column, we're gonna see that now we have the ability to write data to that column. And if one of our users comes in here and writes a note, so hello, we can see that this is appearing in other components and it's also appearing in our data. So you'll wanna explore all the different components that you can add on detail screens and get a sense of how they map to the different uh, data types that you have in the data editor. But 
Before you do that, I want to explain one thing. So we have gone into one detail screen here for this one item, the lithium ion power pack, right? And if we go back to the products screen and go into another one, this nano density cell pack, we're going to also see that notes component that we added earlier on this one. And this is an important point to realize when you first start dealing with collections and their detail screens is that whatever set of components you have inside of the detail screens of that collection will be the same on every single item. Now, this at first might seem a bit restrictive, but it's actually incredibly powerful because what it allows you to do is to design exactly how the screen will look for items that don't exist yet. In other words, if someone in our data source or some user added a new item, we're going to get a totally new screen with exactly these components on it. So if, for example, on this collection, one of our users hit add and they said, you know, new item, and uh, we're going to pretend that we've completed this now, even though it uh, doesn't have any data in it. If we scroll down to the bottom, we're going to see this new item. It doesn't have an image or anything, but it does have all of the elements and components that we want on it here. So this is a really powerful tool for designing screens which then populate with multiple uh, rows.